Um, so the talks today, we've, I, I sort of have listened for the, um, what, is, what I would refer to as the elephant in the room is that um, the majority of people here believe in some type of PRT solution. But I think we can all agree that there's been roadblocks and we haven't achieved the level that we'd like to. And looking at that, um, and I'd like to actually make this a very interactive. I know we haven't uh, elicited sort of responses during the day, but I'd like to sort of change that today. Um, and right now. So what I've done is I've started to uh, put down, I started with eight roadblocks and now I sort of am up to 10 and I'd like to sort of, you know, go through those uh, as a list. Let's add to the end and then let's go through each one and saying like, what can we do for each of these roadblocks to potentially go um, uh, to clear those roadblocks? So let's start with the beginning. There's a, a stigma of elevated transit. Um, we heard that it may not be in uh, uh, Taiwan, but at least in the United States, there seems to be a, a very keen interest of not having elevated roadways. There's a difficulty to fit within the existing cities, uh, because unfortunately we can't create a lot of new cities, and so we have to figure out a way to go into existing cities. Obtaining the rights of way, and all of the uh, legal and other hurdles for obtaining that. The low capacity compared to versus mass transit. The, I would say that there's a negative stigma around PRT in that uh, the people that do know about PRT, someone's like, well, that hasn't worked out or that's not sort of applicable anymore or transit planners that say, okay, it doesn't have the capacity, so I'm not going to look at it. Um, a municipality's low tolerance for risk, so they're not going to want to try anything that hasn't been proven already someplace. Um, there's really, we haven't seen a network effect where if we look at the value of a transit network will be uh, proportional to its size and often probably a, a square of, of that. So the larger the network, the higher capacity and the, and the lower cost we can achieve. Uh, but we haven't really seen that yet. We've been soon doing sort of isolated systems. Uh, there's always the difficulty of funding PRT, and I think that's related to some of these other ones. Uh, I put number nine, autonomous cars presented as a panacea, and we sort of addressed a little bit of, of that. And uh, the high cost of sales and the length of time that it takes. So if we, and oh, so let me before, I, is there anything else that people have, that I can sort of type in here that people have seen as, as potential barriers to adoption of PRT? Anybody? Competition from the existing transport modes. Okay. Need for new infrastructure. And union objections. Union objections, great. Noise. Huh. Uh, the <coughs> um, approval procedures for uh, these so called rail systems. Okay, I think I'll put that in with the, uh, oh, what's, uh, oh, maybe did I not have that? Right of way. Right of way, obtaining right of way, yeah. Okay. It's a uh, general lack of knowledge of what PRT is. Ignorance? Ignorance. ignorance. I, don't, I don't say ignorance because that has a very negative connotation, but the lack of sufficient education is populist. Uh, and probably from uh, urban planners or urban planners not aware. Could you elaborate on the distinction between funding difficulty and high sales costs? Yeah, let's sort of let's uh, go into we'll go into this. so any uh, other of these this level yeah. Lack of standardization leads to confusion among potential buyers. Okay, so kind of a multiplicity of, of solutions that... Okay, and... Yep. Big transportation company don't invest in. Big transit not investing? Yeah, like mobile deals don't invest in. Politics. Yeah. Politics. Okay, any, any specific about the politics? Just sort of the... Yeah, the big transit not investing. Oh, oh, okay, okay, that's the part of the... It's usually that you can't get something done in one election cycle. It's a political problem. Oh, <laughs> okay. So can't get in. Okay. Uh, I, I thought that this fellow was talking about the certification process that one would have to go through 
to get approval from, in our case here, at the uh, California Public Utilities Commission. We have to approve operation before we can get it started. And is that sort of... Carrying the public. So that's sort of, just call it the sort of a certification process. Regulatory. And regulatory. Yeah. Sure. Okay, so why don't we kind of dig, I, I don't know how much we can do in the next uh, nine minutes, 30 seconds, but we will try. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, you can kind of see, and I'm going to just kind of flip through these and see if they have anything that you want to add. So um, for the aesthetics, keep it minimal. Small stations, although I saw the exception of, of people that want to have the large stations for uh, commercial traffic, which you can understand. Um, I would say choose your visuals carefully. I, I think a lot of the visuals just kind of focus on the system and not how it's integrated into the existing environment. Um, so make it so it's, um, you're not sort of showing things that are either impossible or that are out of scale. Um, Definitely compare the impact of roads and vehicles because if you just show the elevated and you're not showing how the current transit system is scarring the landscape with you know this giant black asphalt and all these road vehicles and the large noise, you're not comparing it to a green field. You're comparing it to an alternative and people don't understand that the alternative is something that you're used to and so you don't think of it as a, as a, as a huge scar but we should. When we sort of walk out and we see the cars and I can barely sort of cross because of all the traffic, that's a scar. Um, work with community groups. Um, I met with some person, he, he really wanted the option for an underground. So I was actually sort of investigating, okay, what would be the, the notions of having very small tunnels that could do the, the PRT. Um, any other things specifically around the stigma for elevated transit that you think would help? Just like, yeah, what's that? Judicious. Routing or routing, depending on your exit. And this is an open question. Uh, there's the looking in the bedroom window problem. I'm not quite sure. Uh, well, one, so I'll just address that right now. Just show them a visual because when you're going by at 30 miles an hour and you're sort of, you, you can't actually be able to see in bedroom windows if you're sort of close enough or you have a pod car where you, you could also have your windows such that your sight lines aren't going directly across that you actually have to go down depending upon it. So there's ways around that. I just want to, I wouldn't use the word object but add. Uh, so um, I, I, I see you, you're right, keep minimal small stations, etc. Sometimes uh, the opposite is, is to make a statement is really important, you know. <laughs> I don't think anyone would argue against the, the Golden Gate Bridge or, or a, a, any Calatrava installation or anything from any major architecture uh, in the Sydney property. So sometimes the reverse is actually uh, 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 is better, better than some bigger or better design and, and make a statement of what right. could actually have the effect. Right, so like in, in Paris when they put this giant steel sculpture in the middle that's, exactly. you know, scarred the land, you can say, you say like, well, it was a great scar, you know, it's, or, it's, or like what I use the term is I say like a silver ribbon through the air tying together communities, you know, it's sort of, it's the, it's the poetic license for saying that cities lack a unifying element other than black asphalt. You know, you... Okay, let's, let's keep on going to the next, because I think... Well, I think there's a big thing that you're missing, and that is if you're dealing with elevated, you now can integrate it with building, and it also provides for much greater mobility and access, and, and to not understand that as an incredible benefit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so emphasize that, yeah. I think the other thing to keep in mind is we culture understand of what an elevated rail system is. When you bring that up, most people picture Chicago's L, which is right, right. right. And that's not the case. Yeah. So yeah, so the existing is, is very, is very uh, uh, monstrous. It's a monstrosity, right? Yeah. Monstrous. Monstrous. Especially when you're doing it live and you're trying to type as you're. Um, so uh, let's, let's go into t the difficulty uh, fitting within the existing city, and I think that you had alluded to, to that and, and sort of like, can we create new cities, but understanding the urban planning interface, um, trying to see for urban planners, look at it from their perspective, if you, know, if, if you can make it where you're not interfering with the existing uh, streetscape in terms of either the roadway or the sidewalks. Uh, I think that's a much more positive thing if you can sort of be within that range where the light poles are because they have a very specific way that they want to uh, line things up. Um, 
so I think that kind of overlaps with, with number one a bit, so I'm going to just sort of skip past there because we have four minutes, 53 seconds. So obtaining rights of way and approval. Yep. I think this is a place where you should change the language. Don't ask for a right of way, ask for a utility easement. And don't say you're going to put in a station, just say you're going to put in a stop. <clears throat> yes, because I think the language is important that stations are big, stops are small. Um, I use the term platform because you don't even have to say elevated platform. In fact, I, I, I strick out, I don't use the word elevated. <laughs> Because if you use platform, you use the dictionary definition, it means there's an elevated thing, but you don't have to say the word elevated because elevated conjures up all these you know, emotional uh, restrictions. Um, um, I don't know if you have already got um, a good Well, that's the nice thing about Elevate is usually there's nothing, well, okay, there's utility lines, there's trees, there's... So, so that's why it's a because of the utility lines and other uh, spaces. Although often in a city you don't have utility lines, uh, that's sort of further out, at least in, in the Boston area, so it depends on... But hopefully you can have it where you can choose one side or the other, you can choose the back, you can choose various ways to try to avoid the critical ones. And And so it might be that one-way loops, a fast one-way loop might be better than trying to propose a two-way. And if you look at sort of the average travel times, you might find that that's actually easier to, to do by, uh, um, for fitting in. Um, I saw earlier there's the need for like high level, uh, so getting a governor on board that can kind of, um, can always help. Uh, so number four, the, and a, low capacity versus mass transit and this gets into the role of standards and right now there are standards in place that make it so you can't really have a, a really high capacity system even if you can show that it's very safe and I think that's something that has been unresolved as of yet of, of can we sort of push on those standards to say if we can guarantee the safety thresholds and you're providing a system that's 10 times safer than cars that you don't have to make it you know uh, 10,000 times safer if you just you know have a safety factor that's relative to cars because the autonomous vehicles are only going to be three times safer than cars they're not going to be perfect um, but PRT can be close to perfect but why should we have such a, a gap um, that has to be maintained if, if we don't need perfection we just need better especially if that perfection is is preventing us from having a mass transit system that's PRT so yes Got number four there, and it says uh, low capacity versus mass transit. Uh, whose whose language or uh, is is in there? Uh, I regard that low capacity versus public typical mass transit is one of the myths. It's carried forward. I don't believe you can show any proof that. Uh, uh, okay, so I'll say perceived low capacity versus. On, on, on that, and I saw you just wondering how that fits into what you're. Okay, so ask me after this. Do you hear but. Right? Yes, I, I hear what you're saying. I'll say it's perceived low capacity because I have seen the perceived low capacity. We can debate on, on I, so one is I'm, I'm, I'm proposing that we have a mass transit and I'm calling like Transit X mass transit because it does provide the mass transit. So I would agree with you. You throw it in there and you say, it's, you, you put it in there and you say, <coughs> you, you say, uh, like what you got in your map. What was number four? Perceived low capacity versus okay. typical. Perceived low capacity. Okay, that's 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 more likely. Okay, so. Did you really get into it? It's not. True. Well, 30 seconds. So, um, <laughs> I wish I had more time, but I, I know sort of my time is up. Um, I'll take a, another couple question. Why aren't self-driving cars PRT? Uh, guided rail. I'd say it's why do you need a guided rail for having elevated so you don't have to stop and start. You don't have to have that graph that was shown of, of rail. no, so you don't have to start and stop. 
like I have to do now. 